So let's go to our first guest. I shouldn't even say that. Our next guest at the uh, at the Global Supply Chain yes. Week. But our first guest on What the Truck Today is Jennifer Braun. She's the VP of Kansas City Operations over at Trinity Logistics. Hey, Jennifer, thank you for joining us on the air today. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much. Hey, we had uh, we had a gentleman on from KC Smart Hop on this very show a couple weeks ago, and he was evangelizing KC to us. He sent us this great video of what's going on there and how it's exploding as an e-commerce hub, and it got us really, really interested. So when I saw you come up on our slate, I was excited. And you are you're pretty deep in this Kansas City scene. You went to Missouri Western State University, which, if you people don't know out there, since 2010, the Kansas City Chiefs have used that as their training facility. Yes, that is that is very true. They started doing that after I graduated, sadly, but uh, it's fun to watch when I pass on the highway now and point it out to people like, hey, this is this is pretty neat. <laughs> Kansas City is uh, growing so much, as you mentioned, in all forms of logistics, uh, e-commerce for sure. There's several huge logistics parks uh, all over the area, and a lot of companies are really flocking to Kansas City for a lot of different reasons. You know, obviously being a uh, central freight hub, transportation network, uh, central in the United States, and then also having a lot of good uh, labor pool to pull from, good housing, and just a really great infrastructure. So it's nice to know other people are out there pumping up Kansas City. Well, before we get down to business, I do have to give you a little cowbell, though, because I noticed that you've received an accolade, and that was you've been named a top woman to watch in trucking by the Women in Trucking Association. So congratulations very much for that. It's great to have a strong female leader on this program today. They're always welcome on What the Truck. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's a great, great organization. I'm very honored to be one of the people involved in it. So thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, excellent. And, and welcome, Jennifer. Mike, Mike Vincent here. So let's get down to business a little bit and talk about Trinity Logistics and yourselves there. Talk about the Responsible Care Program uh, that Trinity has, has, has joined recently, the Responsible Care Program 2009. Yes, absolutely. So Responsible Care is sponsored by the American Chemistry Council. It's the global response to uh, safe chemical manufacturing, sourcing, and transportation. So uh, chemical companies, most of the large uh, global chemical companies, all are a member of Responsible Care, as are their different tolling facilities and some of the transport providers and some of the asset-based companies. It's to really promote the safety of chemical um, transportation and development and manufacturing, to keep uh, employees safe, like in the manufacturing plants, and to make sure that the raw materials are sourced ethically. You know, there's a lot of imports, so they want to make sure that it's sourced ethically and then transported responsibly so that, you know, when you have huge semifuls of chemicals rolling down the street, that you're using a responsible company so that there's a, no environmental uh, concerns and wrecks and damages. Yeah, especially as the public gets uh, more aware of these sort of issues yeah. and gets more involved and they get more demanding yeah. of boards and companies and that sort of social and environmental responsibility that is ever increasing. You can talk about regulations all you want, but there's also a market now, right, Michael Vincent? I mean, there's actually people who start, are starting to care about these things and making decisions on companies to invest in, to buy in and stuff beyond just what Capitol Hill puts down on this industry. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we got to talk about that the Responsible Carrier Act. You've, you've, uh, that's got to be very, very important for your customers as far as their CSRs or their corporate social responsibilities, right? Absolutely. Yeah, most of the companies, as you both mentioned, do have sustainability and environmental initiatives, and they, the responsible care companies, are encouraged, highly encouraged, to work with other responsible care companies just to make sure that there's alignment in that safety and compliance piece. And uh, for us, the responsible care uh, management protocol comes with uh, strict carrier vetting and training, uh, how we process orders, how we collect information and how's that in our internal TMS, internal safety protocols that make sure that we have the, the proper safety requirements, insurance, uh, hazmat certificates, uh, tanker endorsements, the safety data sheets, it really makes sure that the risk for the customer is mitigated as much as possible so that they don't get some, you know, surprise on the evening news that uh, some of their product has been involved in an accident with an unauthorized carrier. 
Wow, yeah, that's that's not going to go over well, especially no. on social media these days. No. You know, wh I used to work in the perishable freight industry, and in that, I would tell you, you are crazy if you were just to go to a general, regular broker without experience. Just because they can book a reefer doesn't mean that they're the right partner for you. Chemicals, Hazmat, super specialized as well. How important is it to have a partner with experience when you're in this side of the uh, the field? Wow, it is so very um, important because there's so many, there's so much increasing regulation uh, that a lot of people have a hard time keeping up with it. So it's it's really hard for companies to make sure that their logistics managers are trained in so many disciplines and across so many regulations. Uh, a lot of a lot of our customers, we are really able to help them figure out what the best uh, mode is and if they really need to hire a hazmat carrier, is, is the weight limit above or underneath the threshold? And just to be honest with them, I guess, on the cost of, of servicing certain product lines, um, we're able to help them determine if there's items that maybe protect from freeze. And again, one of the newer regulations is the tanker endorsement a lot of people may not um, know exactly what that means or to make sure that they're hiring the right driver. So if you do go with someone unexperienced or inexperienced, I should say, then they may accidentally send in a truck to your facility and the driver isn't authorized to haul that. So then you have a, a case where maybe you can't get a replacement driver in there quickly enough and then you miss a vital delivery date to your customer. So it's very important, as you mentioned. It absolutely is, and and so now you you've with all this talk of regulation and a minute risk mitigation and yeah. and don't wake up with your your freight on the evening news, you've spooked everybody who is who's moving <laughs> chemicals, right? Yeah. Or the so, front of, of the front of freightwaves.com or freightwaves TV. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So so they're all thinking I've got to go with asset based people. I can't have an intermediary in here because I need to have complete control over there. Is that that's not necessarily true? Can you talk to the benefits of having that intermediary intermediary there with that experience to help navigate these waters? Absolutely, absolutely. One of the biggest benefits to customers to at least have an intermediary in their mix of providers is for the opportunity for options and solutions. Most asset-based companies, I mean. Their, their resources and capacity may fluctuate um, depending on seasonality and what other customers are servicing. So they could have a finite um, capacity. Uh, Trinity is able to offer endless capacity to customers. Another value to have an intermediary is just the different modalities. Not every asset-based company is able to offer the different modes like Trinity does, the LTL, the truckload, uh, the protect from freeze, which is which is huge because a lot of chemicals freeze, and in, intermodal and dray. Not a lot of um, not a lot of companies have a lot of drayage providers on speed dial. They may know one or two, and then beyond that, they're kind of clueless. So having having an intermediary with all those um, options is very helpful. Additionally, there's a lot of M and A in the chemical industry. So a lot of times companies may end up with an acquisition or a new product line, a new business line, or in the pandemic where all of a sudden you're having to shift some of your uh, supply chain and where you're shipping to and from because of the wild fluctuations that COVID brought us all. And maybe the asset-based companies aren't in position. They're not on the routing guide. They're like, oh, well, we used to ship this out of Baytown, Texas, and now we're having to ship it out of Bay St. Louis, Mississippi. Who are we going to call? You know, if you don't have the asset-based players in place, you really need to have another solution. And that's where an intermediary like Trinity really can shine. You know, we were talking about responsibility earlier. One of the topics that comes up is that environmental responsibility. But especially in this space, it's one of those conversations that can trigger people quite easily on both sides mm -hmm. of the aisle, especially mm -hmm. when you're talking about environmental regulation. How do you have those conversations and make the progress that you need to make without... Um, without alienating either side of the equation? Oh, sure, that's a, that's a great question. So um, a lot of times it's about asking, asking those questions, you know, what their, what their corporate responsibility programs look like, um, what they're doing besides just having it be corporate speak, what they're doing to have an action plan to fulfilling that. And then sometimes it's good to uh, tell 
illustrate what other customers have found valuable about Trinity. We may say, hey, this, this company has um, a duty to their shareholders to reduce emissions by X amount, or they're held accountable uh, to different customers to be a, a member of this program. And this is how Trinity's helped. And then obviously on the uh, carrier side, then we're, we're able to make sure that we're going straight to those companies that have the resources and the, the drivers and the certifications um, that we need. A lot of it's just about um, education and asking questions. It, it, this is becoming less of a problem, but sometimes the people that are carrying out the, the logistics and the supply chain, they there may be a disconnect between them and their um, corporate responsibility department or their risk people. So maybe maybe there's um, some opportunities for improvement in knowing exactly what what do we need to do as a company to be aligned in this initiative or um, what is what is our pollution insurance? What what does that look like? You know, so it's just, it, it, I guess, illustrating stories and asking good questions helps to um, fill that gap. Excellent. You know, Jennifer, we've talked to a lot of people over the last over the last year about all the challenges, obviously, that people have had in in the logistics and supply chains from the e-commerce issues and and food and beverage and and now talking about the uh, the vaccines. But from the chemical logistics, how have you guys handled the challenges? What have those challenges been over the last year, and how are you challenging? How are you handling those and and moving forward and, and right now? Right. That's a great question. So there have been. A lot of challenges um, in the chemical space and just in managing through that. A lot of our customers had uh, slower sales. Some had heightened sales. Um, I was listening to the um, piece a few minutes ago with um, Rob Benedict, and he was talking about, you know, some companies really had higher sales. The ones that were providing uh, materials for the PPE, they started having increased shipments and from some unlikely or unusual ship points. So um, keeping up with, with them and making sure that we were delivering on time and picking up on time and in a really fluid, rapidly changing um, time. And then other companies really bottomed out. And so just trying to support them when they were having their own internal issues of you know, maybe being quarantined, their plants were shutting down because they um, had a COVID outbreak. Um, luckily, as far as servicing customers during all this, uh, we were able to transition so smooth, smoothly um, into a, a remote environment as needed. And so the communication and the ability to support customers never missed a beat. We were able to, you know, plug right in with our uh TMS and our phone, everything is connected. We were very well set up to uh, make that transition so that we were able to help customers pretty easily. This year, 2021, the chemical uh, industry itself has a very uh, rosy outlook. So um, I'm anticipating this being a really great year for the chemical manufacturers and then uh, for companies like Trinity who are able to service those customers. It, there's no doubt about it. We're talking about two male dominated industries here. When you talk about oil and gas, the energy yeah. sector, you're talking about freight. But you are a female who's been very successful in this sector. What would you say to young women out there who are looking at this as a career path and wondering about what their career trajectory would be? Oh, yes, that, yes, absolutely. I would say communication and grit and just doing your best every day and not taking no for an answer. And if you just stay true to yourself and you're focused in on doing your best. And at the end of the day, a lot of it is about um, communications and building good relationships and knowing how to just how to speak to different people, both internally to internal customers and teammates, and then also externally and finding out what's important to people Um I think I'm a big believer in you can learn anything and you can do anything you set your mind to. So if that's logistics and that's um, persevering and thriving in a male dominated field, then yeah, absolutely. You can do that. So I would say uh, other females looking to enter into this industry just need to 
just need to go for it and and not um, set themselves in situations where they're engaging in like self-limiting behavior. Wow. Well, we'll give you a little cowbell for that. And hey, man, perseverance yeah. will take you to Mars, as we learned last Friday on the show. And we talked to NASA. <laughs> where do people true. go to learn more information and, and connect with you? Oh, yes. Go to trinitylogistics.com. We also are on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. We're on YouTube. So trinitylogistics.com. Go out, find us. We've got a lot of great ways to connect with our team. And we'd love to hear from everyone listening. Thank you so much. Take care. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks, Jennifer.